Hello YouTube, it's Aid here from Dale Skidmore Second Hand Tires. Welcome back to the Boat Restoration Part 10. I've uh, started to put things back together again now. I've got the rails on the uh, starboard side and I'm going to go with the transom plate. It's, uh, it looks pretty good to, to my eye and if I start taking any more off I don't think it's going to make it any better. I'm going to change all the curves and everything so it looks pretty pretty well okay to me. I think it fits in nicely with everything. So what I've done is I've epoxied, resined the insides of the starboard rails and I'm in the middle now of doing the same thing with the port rails. I'm just doing the insides and the bottoms because of uh, the sanding and whatnot that's going to go on on the uh, outside and I'll do them after. The trouble is it's a bit hard to find anywhere to store them once, they, once they're drying. This has just had first coat and I'm going to apply a second coat to it in a minute because it's dry now and then uh, I'll find somewhere to put it and then do the same with the other rail. And uh, what happens is it it soaks in, the first coat seems to soak in quite a lot and the second coat sort of lays on the top and that will give it a nice bit of protection from the damp and humidity and the water that uh, is bound to get on it over the years and then also the outside once I've epoxied them once they're fitted I shall varnish them as well and the next door's cat's coming to have a look at what's going on he's all interested so we're going to be getting the other side on in the next, well, probably tomorrow now because of the time it takes for it to dry. It's a couple of hours ago, but I want to make sure it's fully cured before I do put them on because I don't want them sticking. There's the cat. His name's Ringo. He's a bit wild. He doesn't like being stroked. And whilst they're going off, actually, there's a couple of other things I've got to do. So I'll talk about that in a second. The first thing is that um, I've been wondering how to finish off the ends of the out whales at the prow. And I did at first think of just doing straight across and joining them up. But there's bound to be some sort of uh, problem with that with getting them lined up right or whatever. Um, so what I thought about doing was I've drawn a line through there, which I'll cut off. I'll probably cut it off just slightly on the waist side. And then when the other rail comes around, I'll be able to fit them together so that that one sweeps across the front of this one and then trims off flush like that and then put a nail down through to hold them together and I think that's probably the best way of doing it. Some of them actually seem to just finish it straight across there so there's no um, no wood going across the front but I'm having a, a deck on the front of this, the fore deck and that's going to come down flush really with the outside edge through here and I'm hoping that I can make some nail heads on the off cuts of the nails that go through the rails um, enough just to put a decorative uh, nailed edge on the top for uh, finishing off that and the other thing is that I'm going to have to make up a, uh, a guide with two holes in it to locate where the nails go through so that each one, each spacing is exactly the same so it looks nice and neat. I think somewhere around about 100 mil hole centers, something like that, maybe 120. I'll uh, experiment a bit with that on some rough stuff, some off cuts, and then make up a, uh, a hook sort of thing that will hang on to the top and have uh, locating hole and the drilling hole 
and then I'll go around and everything will be exactly the same spacing all the way around then. And part of the, uh, the thing to do with that is to position the rollocks to mark out where they're going. So I'll have to get back in the boat with uh, the seat on, the thwart, and actually sort of mark across each side where I think the rollocks should go. And I said before in the previous video that they're somewhere around about level with the knees so that you've got enough room to pull back as well as lean back and um, so that you get the full sweep of the oars. So uh, there are a couple of things I can be doing whilst the uh, resin is uh, hardening going off on the inside of the port rails. It takes about uh, 20, 20 mils per uh, side and bottom face uh, for each of the coats on each of the rails. And I found that mixing up 20 mils at a time is probably the, uh, the a reasonable sort of amount for most of the jobs that, uh, that are going now. I think uh, perhaps the, uh, the transom plate might take a bit more than that but 20 mils at a time is enough to handle because especially now I mean it's like a it's warm as anything in here these uh, we've had this wonderful heat wave it's been glorious um, but it does tend to make the resin go off quicker so 20 mils at a time is, is quite enough to be working with without it going bang in the in the cup and uh, obviously once it spreads out it actually slows down the curing time but when it's all together it uh, in, a, in one lump in a cup it is uh, ten, it does tend to heat up a bit and go off quicker so um, you know it's a uh, it's a reasonable amount to work with and you're not losing too much because it is expensive stuff to work with um, goodness knows uh, it's one one liter is 35 quid so uh, you know you can do the sums yourself if you're wasting a lot of it, it very quickly it can build up to be quite an expensive do so uh, it's best to mix up too little rather than too much in some ways because it'll if you you know it doesn't take long to mix up again a new batch so you're not going to lose anything by mixing up more than one batch as you can tell i'm also extremely gravelly at the moment so uh, some of you with sub base woofers on your computers might be experiencing some earthquake symptoms at the moment. But uh, someone has come home with a cold and passed it on to me. And uh, he's already over it. <laughs> and I've passed it on to Kath. But uh, I'm on the road to recovery, so I keep soldiering on. <laughs> Always forget my gloves. I found these brushes in pound stretcher. They're uh, three to forty nine p. I'll trim them down. To about half their length and they're pretty good they're um, they don't drop too many hairs like some of the brushes I've used so they're pretty good really for the price I bought a few packets but if you put them in the thinners they'll last overnight they won't go off and then just give them a good brush out on something the next time you come to use them and uh, they don't go there uh, and then those will waste so quick you can get a few uses out of, out of the brush that's a wrap for that one second coat on we'll leave it now for a bit so I'll think about doing the uh, doing the nail cage earlier on this week I had a discussion with uh, Des 21st century caveman about uh, planes and uh, other hand tools. He's making a, a fence, a dividing fence up his garden and the next door neighbours and used a lot of recycled wood which is a good thing to see and um, 
the, uh, the conversation sort of went along the lines about uh, when you use a jigsaw, you still need to use a plane afterwards to uh, to straighten things up because there'll always be a bit of a wavy line to them. And um, he was using a smoothing plane, which is a, a plane that's about, I don't know, 10 inches, maybe something like that long, 30 centimetres, getting on that way. And I said about, I use a jack plane and a block plane. And they're both st uh, Stanley ones I use. The block plane's 5.5J, that's this small one here. And it's got a, I think about a 40 mil wide blade. And then the jack plane, I think there was also uh, a number five plane, I think they're called, is about 36 centimetres long. Uh, it's about, what, 14 inches, something like that. And um, I can't use, as I say, I can't use the smoothing plane. I don't know what it is about it. But since I've been using this, I've had this plane for about 25 years and I bought it second hand. And I had it, the foot uh, machined up in a engineering shop to make it flat and true onto the side like it's laying down now for using for shooting um, pieces of wood to join them together on a shooting board and it's just a, a really nice plane to use it's well set up and I had to do a bit of work on the handle I don't know if you can see the handle actually had a crack in it and it wouldn't glue back together I think it'd been glued before and it just wouldn't glue back together so I actually flattened it off and let in a new piece of wood, which is no bad thing because it actually made it fit my hand better. I've also had to shape up with a file just to take some of the wood away to give a, um, a better, make it sort of like longer, long enough for my hand to go in to hold it because um, it used to pinch. So as I took a bit off down there and then up there on that, in that area as well just enough to make it fit my hand properly and with that extension it made it more comfortable to use and oh, I wonder what that is going over it's not a Spitfire um, where was I? yeah it made it more comfortable to use and uh, the little block plane is a boon for, for small work um, and that's that's my planes. <laughs> There's another plane going over. Talk about planes. They all turn up at once. So uh, if that's any good to your desert all. Here we go for the first couple of holes. And I'm just over halfway up the boat now, nailing the uh, rails on. Now, I've got the hole started for the next nail. I've got to rest this hammer against the back of the, the head of the nail so I can drive the robot. I'm probably going to have some big bruises on my belly. Stuck on there now. That's got it. Yeah. 
Let's do it again. the mill per out, put the hammer behind again and with the ball end peen the uh, end of the nail over. It's a slow sort of uh, progress. Each nail takes a little while to fit, but they're getting faster at doing them. I'm not sure whether I shouldn't have uh, maybe have been inside the boat and hammered the nails through to the outside because that's the backrest. But uh, I don't know. I haven't sat on there yet to know whether I did the right thing or not. But to be honest. It's not a very easy part to do because I'll have to be kneeling down because you can't put the rows on if you're on the side that the row is. The row has to be, the point of the nails has to be away from you to be able to put the rows on. So, uh, certainly if you're working on your own. So we could always put a little cushion on the back there. Well, I've started to uh, plane down the top of the transom to get it all level and flush with the uh, transom rail. There's still a little bit of finishing up to do around that area. I was going to use a router and, um, and do it with a router, but uh, I started to plane it up just to see what it was like and get rid of the excess fiberglass on the top, and it's going quick enough. So I'll just plug away at that every so often. and. Uh, I'll have it down in no time. All the nails are in now, uh, up to the front end, and I think once I get that block on, there's just two more nails to put in that go through into that block to finish off the nailing. I did, in the end, decide to do it at 120 mil spacings because I figured that 120 mil was the right sort of thing. I on the wooden boats, I think they do them every 100 mil or 4 inches, but I figured that uh, 120 mil shows attention to detail, 100 mil shows obsession. So that's what I went with. <laughs> well, I think uh, that just about wraps up this episode. The, uh, the boat. It's shaping up now, things are going on, and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, the next step, which once finished fitting the uh, block at the prow, will probably be, um, I suppose, it's upside down this now. Although, before I do that, I might actually have the boat out for the day and fit the tow bar to the car. I've got the tow bar over there in the box. It's been there for a, a couple of weeks. And I've got a pit in here so I can actually reverse the car in over the pit and work quite comfortably underneath just off a stall and uh, fit that. And then return to the boat. Once you get the boat uh, upside down, it's gonna go on the trestle on the table on here so I can work on the keel and scraping and preparing ready for paint and whilst that's upside down I can start looking at the trailer as well because there's some welding to do on the trailer stripping down the wheels and the suspension seeing what that's like uh, it may be uh, a replacement job for some of the stuff or it may even be look for a whole new trailer I don't know yet really um, we'll have to wait and see 
but um, this has been a nice episode I think uh, I've got what I wanted done and it looks as exactly like I was hoping it would and um, the nailing is a is a long old process I, I did it over a couple of days I sort of I didn't rush it because I've got to get the rails sort of all cramped up in the right place and make sure they're all pointing the right way and they're level with each other and uh, it sort of um, was a nice leisurely thing to do the radio on and uh, the weather's hot and lovely as usual so uh, it, it went on in uh, the time that it took I wasn't worried about how long it was going to take and uh, I think it it does look nice Old bright copper work. Obviously, what's going to happen to them over the years are going to dull down anyway. But uh, at the moment, they look good, and it's a tra traditional method of uh, fitting things to boats. So uh, I've got that in. Rolex. I've got to go and get some uh, some bolts for those from the old Chandler's. I'll get them when I get the uh, uh, eye bolt for the front and the uh, paint. This. Um, Backrest isn't too bad. I thought the nails might uh, dig in your back, but they don't seem to be. And uh, someone's going to have a nice treat here being rowed up the river, sitting in this seat in the not too distant future. I'll uh, say sayonara and see you later. Cheerio.